you know, we've been playing around with all sorts of pedals for five years since we started doing this and kind of researching the sounds of each one and, uh, you know, trying to characterize how we can recreate that sound digitally if it was an analog pedal to begin with. When I started at Source Audio, I was a real tube amp snob. The only distortion I would use was real distortion from a tube amp. Then when we started really getting into the classic distortion, we started acquiring a lot more pedals. And I, I personally bought far too many. And I really came to see the, the charm in solid state distortions. I mean, it really gives you something that a vacuum tube amp can't. You can't get that sound on a vacuum tube amplifier. It can't be done. We tried to pick pedals typically that someone had recommended to us or ones that we knew that we liked, you know, for a particular sound if someone's looking for, you know, a British rock tone, you know, what's the pedal typically used for that, and then try to pick the best one out of that group and use that. Each pedal is going to have a different way of creating distortion. Some of them are very similar. You know, some of them are just kind of, there's a dozen variations of a tube screamer. So then you're going, you're going to go and you're going to model that somehow later. You're going to come up with a way of producing a similar sound, but in the digital domain. And then there's also all sorts of um, equalizer voicings and things and you know, you're going to have certain filters on one pedal that you won't have on another, and that gives a lot of color to the tone. To try to hear just what it is that makes a particular fuzz have its own sound. What What is in the sound? You can't really point to it. You know, you can point to a, something mechanical on a guitar. You can say, look, look at the bridge on this guitar. It is contributing to the sound. And everybody can go stare at that bridge and 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 see. You know, oh, this is a really small bridge and it's got plastic saddles. That's probably why this guitar doesn't really sound all that good. And, uh, but you can't really point to a sound as it goes by. All you can say is, doesn't that sound sort of harsh in the high end? And maybe it does, maybe it doesn't really strike you that way. If you're taking your lawnmower apart and putting it back together again after cleaning the whatever, you know what to do. It's really pretty obvious, and you know at the end, as long as you don't lose any parts, you get it back together, right? And it <laughs> hopefully will work. But this is just so... Um, well, I guess difficult. There's a word. It's difficult. I just have to use my ears to try to compare what the digital simulation is doing and what the real analog pedal is doing. <laughs> We tried not to buy into the whole retro thing, um, and our main design philosophy for the, the housings and the look of the pedals, and also the interface, was to go with something simple and modern. We try to keep it to as low number of knobs and controls as possible, but still allowing the user to get uh, a lot of features and a lot of different sounds. Well, we heard that Bob wanted to add a few more knobs to the interface. <laughs> yes. What do you think about that? Bob is a knob tweaker. And it's a constant struggle, the yin and the yang of Source Audio is Jesse and Bob struggling over the number of knobs that are to be included on the box. If I had more, more knobs, I mean, this, this uh, selector switch here is actually changing something like 25 parameters. So if instead of having this one knob, we had had 25 more knobs, <laughs> then my job would have been much easier. I wouldn't have had to try to figure out how to adjust all these parameters to get a good sound. It would have just been the user's problem. <laughs> Digital allows you to do some things which are possible to do in analog, but it would be way too cumbersome. So, you know, just to go back to like the multi-wave, distortion, for instance. You could approximate that if you had 10 analog distortion pedals, all band split and working at the same time, basically with individual settings for each one. And But to really set that up or to, you know, to make an analog circuit that's going to do that, it's just, it's a pain in the butt. The advantages of digital, there are no transistors to be temperature sensitive. So you don't have to think, uh-oh, it's really hot out. My fuzz is not going to be working. With digital processing, you're really always going to get the same result. There's no real margin for the parts to drift and become less than ideal. You know, 
I've seen some guys who have anywhere from like six to ten pedals on their board, which are just distortion. So this could conceivably take the place of those. I'd say it's useful for a lot of guys, especially like um, anywhere from the pro musician to the guy who's doing cover tunes and needs uh, a different sound because they're doing Metallica and then they're doing uh, Cars and who knows what else.